Welcome back, Alpha Nuts. So I'm getting ready to go on a big road trip in the 4C here. And I kind of wanted to go over some things and show you guys how I'm prepping the car to get ready for the trip. And some tools I'm going to take with me to hopefully fix any problems that might come up. So I've definitely taken the 4C on trips before, but they've been just here in Texas. And, you know, even though Texas is gigantic, you know, I've finally ever been, I don't know, just a few hours away from home. But this time I'm going to Colorado for the Auto Mezzi, which is a gigantic Italian car show up there. I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm especially looking forward to driving this thing through some mountain passes. So the first thing I decided to do is get some new wheels and tires because the tires I currently had on the car were 200 tread wear and I don't want to wear these things out on a road trip. So I got these amazing bespoke forge brushed copper wheels and put some Bridgestone all seasons on them. You never know what kind of weather Colorado is going to throw at you. So it's good to have some all seasons on when you're going on a trip. But when I was getting ready to put my new wheels on, I noticed there was kind of some grooving going on on my brake rotors. The rears were fine, but it was only on the fronts here. So I decided I better check this out. I've got these digital rotor calipers, which are really kind of handy for measuring brake rotors. And you can see that it's reading at 27.8 millimeters, 27.8 kind of check a few spots on here 27.9 28 so the rotors are looking like they're within spec you know just barely if you see on here on the face of the rotor it actually tells you 26 millimeters is the minimum thickness and while i can feel this grooving here it doesn't really seem to be that severe so i think i'm going to plan on replacing the rotors when i get back but as far as going on this trip i think they're gonna be okay oh and i'll leave a link down in the description below where you can get these guys they're super handy and they're pretty inexpensive too and what makes them different from regular calipers is this little jaw arrangement right here and since the rotors were looking worn i decided i should better check the brake pads too i got these little brake pad gauges right here makes checking the brake pads real easy this is the six millimeter gauge and as you can see it wobbles back and forth in there and the eight millimeter gauge doesn't quite fit so we're probably looking at around seven millimeters on the uh, brake pads which you know that's obviously worn but not to the point where they really need to be replaced so I think I'm just going to go ahead and leave them. But Alpha actually makes it really easy to swap the brake pads out whenever it's time to do so. You have to disconnect the little wear sensor here and then these pins just push out and then the brake pads just slide out like this. And when it comes time to replace the rotors, that's not too hard either. The first thing you have to do is you see this little hard line here, it connects right into the caliper. You have to pop this clip off right here and then there's a little bolt right here that let you take that bracket off and then that will free up the caliper so you can swing it out of the way and then it's just these two e-torx bolts right here and that's it that pops off and to get the rotor off it just has this one bolt holding the rotor on but like i said i'll do that when i get back so look forward to that video oh and i'll link these down in the description below too all right let's take a look at what's inside my little tool bag here first on the outside pocket we have a light and some cool gloves. Open this little guy up. Probably the biggest thing we have in here is a wrench set. It's both SAE and metric. And the reason why I have both SAE and metric is because you notice it skips a few of the metric sizes. Well, you can fill in with the SAE on those. And this little green pouch, we have a swivel headed ratchet. These are real handy and then a whole bunch of sockets and i took the sockets off their holder just for ease of packaging in this bag this is a pretty tiny bag of course but these are nice and color coded so it's easy to find which one you're looking for and we have some hex wrenches a four in one screwdriver a magnet grabby thing these are extremely handy some diagonal cutters needle nose pliers some slip joint pliers lineman pliers which don't really need to be in there but they're in there anyway regular pliers and some vice grips and that's about all i can fit in this tiny little bag but really that's about all you need and there's one other important piece of equipment that i'm not showing here but i'm bringing my laptop with multi ecu scan on it that's uh, essential with these alfa romeos now the other thing i'm going to bring is one of these jump starter packs with a built-in air compressor 
I've used ones like this before, but this one's a brand new one, so I'm gonna have to test it out here in just a minute. Maybe I'll check the inflation of uh, the new tires with this guy. It's a four in one multitask device. Jump start, air compressor, flashlight, and power bank. The 12 volt diesel universal. Uh, these things are funny, aren't they? You have your basic instructions for jump starting the car, overcurrent protection, overcharge protection, over discharge protection, over heat protection, reverse connection protection, over voltage protection. I feel very protected, don't you? Looks like it charges via type C port and yeah, whatever. Well, let's get this thing open. It comes in a nice little case. Has its own charging cable, that's good. These are the jump starter cables, and this is the air inflator cable. Get the condom off this thing. Let's hit the power button and see if this thing has any charge. Oh yeah, look at that. It shows it's got full charge. It's good to have full charge from the factory, but of course I'll top it off before I leave on the trip. This little R button, looks like it changes the mode. You hold down the R button, and it changes the units that you work in. So, I'll leave it in PSI. You got the car mode there. We don't need 35 for the 4C. The fronts are 26 and the rears are 29. I might give it just a little bit more just in case. Here's where you hook up the battery terminal. We're not going to mess with that right now, but this looks like the light, the charging port, and the USB out. And this is where this guy screws into. Now the other little portable air inflator I just tested, that had a quick disconnect. I like that better. But uh, this is easy enough. The other one wasn't a jump start pack though. This one doubles as a jump start pack. Hold down the little light button and you have a little light. It's not very bright, is it? But, you know, I guess in an emergency it'd be fine. All right, well, let me get my tools put back up and get the wheel on and we'll test this thing out. Oh, and I also wanted to point out that all these tools are actually from Harbor Freight. You know, if you use coupons, you can get all these things dirt cheap and just, you know, leave them in the car. If they happen to grow legs, it's not a big deal, right? But this guy I got off of Amazon. I'll leave a link for it in the description below. These things are real handy to have. I'm going to shove a magnetic tray down in here, too. Those things are essential. All right, so it's reading a little bit low here. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I have it programmed. Oh, no, it didn't remember the program from last time. So I'll turn that down to 27. And there we go. Shuts off on its own, just like it's supposed to. And we went from full bars to down to three, but I hadn't charged this thing at all, so that's probably still good. I'm gonna power this thing off. Now let me turn it back on, cause I didn't notice. Yeah, every time you power it off, it doesn't seem to remember your last setting. I don't really like that. It defaults back to bar, so you have to hold the freaking mode button here down to get back to PSI, and then it yeah defaults back to 36. I wonder if there's a way to like save that or something. I don't know. Should actually read the instructions, I suppose. But even holding it and turning it off, turn it back on, yeah, defaults back to bar. That kind of stinks. I don't like that. All right, well, let's double check it with uh, another tire gauge here. See, this one's reading 28, so I guess it's one PSI off. Uh, that's not too bad. I'm gonna run with it. I don't care. All right, now I'm gonna turn my attention to the trunk. I'm gonna toss a whole new thing of shop towels in here those are always important got a couple other things to clean up the car have some wipes for detailing have some waterless wash and some microfiber towels and of course these are the factory 4c toolkit right here a little tire inflator the tow hook and these are the little tools to access the washer fluid and that sort of stuff oh speaking of i should probably check that but here's the jump starter and inflator and here's the little toolkit. I probably won't put a whole bunch of stuff back here just because it actually gets kind of warm back here. I don't know. We'll see. I checked everything on the 4C not too long ago, but we'll just give a quick glance at the fluids. Coolant is present. You know, it's probably about time to flush the coolant and change that out. I mean, the car is nine years old. Isn't that crazy? Check the oil real quick. Oh yeah, that looks perfectly fine. And of course it's got AMS oil in there. So, you know, that's good stuff. Now let me go up to the front and check out the washer fluid. This, that's always a fun procedure on this thing. So if you come up to the front of the car and look down inside the cowling here, you notice we have some screws to take this screen off and your washer fill is actually right there. And inside this little kit that's in the trunk is everything you need to fill it up. 
We have various tubes and funnels and whatnot. And there's supposed to be a screwdriver in there too, I think. Uh, I don't see it. Probably in the other toolkit actually. So I use a little stubby screwdriver to get these things off. And I kind of want to point out that they're not exactly screws. They, uh, they just have a little twist lock thing to them. And the little metal grate here, it's got these two tabs down here on the bottom. One there, one over here. They kind of slot down in there like that. But once you get this out of the way, you can then just pop open your little filler. And then take your little swan neck doohickey, shove that down in there. And you know, one of these funnels is supposed to be for the washer fluid and the other one for the, the brake. And you know, I've never used either one. The only time I messed with the, the brake reservoir, like which is inside that little panel right over there, I actually took just the whole hood off. But once you have the little swan neck thing in there, just stick a little funnel there. Uh, maybe it is supposed to be the black one. It, yeah, whatever, it don't matter. And now we just pour juice into it until it's full. And how do you know when it's full? Well, uh, it's gonna make a mess, of course. Yeah, just like that. And we just pop our little cap back on, slide this bad boy back into place, and then put our weird little screws back in. And they just lock, just like that, like a quarter of a turn. It's kind of weird whenever they feel like they're going in, doesn't feel like they're actually catching on anything, but as soon as you turn it, it grabs and locks it in. Easy peasy. And then this little thing just Velcros back into the nooks and crannies of the trunk. Well, I think that's about all I need to do to get ready to go. I'm really excited about this trip to Colorado. I think it's going to be about 900 miles one way or something. Plus, I'm going to drive all over the state too. It's going to be a lot of fun. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to have a video about how the car does on the road trip because, you know, 4C, it's not exactly a normal car. And I'll also have another video about the Auto Mezzi, the big show. Well, bye. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.